All righty. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the third installment of these questions. Today, we're going to be covering vascular and RVT. Once again, if you find that I'm talking too fast during the videos, you can slow down the speed on YouTube. So without further ado, let's begin. Question number one. While performing an augmentation during a venous Doppler, you notice a change of color from blue to red that lasts four seconds. This is most likely caused by A. Deep vein thrombosis B. Venous reflux C. Hypertension D. None of the above. So making sure your scale is not inverted, uh, the blue should be going away from the transducer and that's normal venous flow. If you have a signal of red, that means it's going towards the transducer. For a time period of four seconds, that would be B, reflux. Number two, while scanning the popliteal area, you notice a round anechoic structure. This is most likely A, A, thrombus, B, baker cyst, C, aneurysm, D, edema. The answer is B, baker cyst. Number three, the normal renal artery waveform is A, low resistance, B, high resistance, C, triphasic, or D, biphasic. The answer is A, low resistance. So it's going to have forward flow or anterograde flow throughout the entire cardiac cycle and a good amount of diastolic flow. And it is also monophasic. Number four. This spectral waveform from the distal ICA suggests A. ICA stenosis B. ECA stenosis C. Brain death or D. Occlusion of the proximal ICA The answer is D. Occlusion of the proximal ICA Number 5. In a patient with portal hypertension, you notice a network of varices on the abdominal wall. This is known as A. Caput medusa B. Azigos vein C. Hemiazigos vein or D. Gastric varices The answer is A. Caput medusa Number 6. A common cause of varicose veins is A. Muscle hypertrophy B. Valvular incompetence C. Intimal thickening or D. Arterial thrombus the answer is B, valvular incompetence. A patient with mild claudication has a PVR. The ankle brachial index is 1.09. What should you do next? Discharge. A, discharge. B, perform a stress test. C, reboot the machine. Or D, go on a break. The answer is B, perform a stress test then go on a break. Number eight, how do you calculate an ABI or ankle brachial index? A, ankle blood pressure multiplied by arm blood pressure. B, ankle blood pressure divided by arm blood pressure. C, arm, bro C, arm blood pressure divided by ankle blood pressure. D, ankle blood pressure subtracted by arm blood pressure. The answer is B, ankle blood pressure divided by arm blood pressure. Number nine, your patient has erythema and edema along his anterior tibial regions. This is most likely A, venous ulcer, B, varicose veins, C, thrombophlebitis, or D, cellulitis. The answer is D, cellulitis. Cellulitis usually appears as edema and redness of the skin. Number 10. How can you acquire the specificity of a diagnostic exam? A. Number of true positives plus false negatives. B. Number of true positives divided by all positive diagnoses. C. Number of true negatives divided by all negative diagnoses. Or D. None of the above. The answer is C, the number of true negatives divided by all negative diagnoses. Number 11, a 21-year-old male experiences cramps in his gastrocnemius muscle after leg presses. 
His ankle pressures are normal at rest, but decrease after exercise. This is most likely A. Femoral artery occlusion. B. Popliteal stenosis. C. Popliteal entrapment. Or D. Compartment syndrome. The answer is C. Popliteal entrapment. Femoral artery occlusion would be uncommon in a 21-year-old. And popliteal stenosis would also not be likely in such a young patient. Compartment syndrome is increased pressures in a muscle compartment, usually caused, usually caused from an injury like a fracture. Number 12. In this image of the radial artery, the flow is A. Antegrade B. Retrograde C. Biphasic or D. Stenotic the answer is A, antegrade. Uh, arterial flow is usually going towards the extremities away from the heart. In this image, you can see that you have the color inverted. So the blue flow is going towards the transducer. Number 13, how can you differentiate the ECA or external carotid artery from the ICA, the internal carotid artery? A, the ICA is larger. B, the ICA has proximal branches. C, the ECA has proximal branches. D, the ECA is larger. The answer is C, the ECA has proximal branches. The ICA and ECA are usually the same size. Um, sometimes the ICA can be bigger than the ECA. That is not always the case though. And the ICA's first branch is the ophthalmic artery. Number 14, the veins hold what percentage of the body's blood volume? A, 15 to 30 percent, B, 25 to 40 percent, C, 40 to 50 percent, D, 60 to 80 percent. The answer is B, 25 to 40 percent. Number 15, during a treadmill test, a patient experiences decreased ankle pressures bilaterally. This suggests A, deep vein thrombosis, B, within normal limits, C, claudication, or D, aortic occlusion? The answer is C, claudication. Claudication is defined as a cramping type pain in the leg that is induced by exercise, usually due to arterial obstruction. Number 16, Valsalva maneuver A, increases thoracic pressure and decreases abdominal pressure. B, Increases abdominal pressure and decreases thoracic pressure. C. Increases venous flow in the body. Or D. Decreases or stops venous flow in the body. The answer is D. Decreases or stops venous flow in the body. Number 17. The aortic arch gives rise to all of the following except A. Brachiocephalic artery. B. Inanimate artery. C left subclavian artery, D, left common carotid artery, or E, right common carotid artery. So the normal aortic arch usually has the first artery is the brachiocephalic, followed by the left common carotid, then followed by the left subclavian artery. So the answer is E, right common carotid artery, is not a branch directly off of the aortic arch. It is a branch of the brachiocephalic artery which bifurcates into right common carotid and right subclavian. Number 18, this PVR suggests arterial disease in what area? A, aorta iliac region, B, iliofemoral region, C, femoral popliteal region, or D, tibial? The answer is C, femoral popliteal. You can see that the common femoral artery has a normal triphasic waveform pattern and an ABI of one. After that, all the flows are monophasic with ABAs below one. Number 19, transcranial Doppler findings of vasospasm in a subarachnoid hemorrhage are A, absent flow in the MCA, B, reversal of flow in the MCA, C, bidirectional flow in the MCA, or D, greatly increased mean velocities in the MCA. The answer is D, greatly increased mean velocities in the MCA. Number 20, descending venography is used to determine A, deep vein thrombosis, B, superficial vein thrombosis, C, valvular insufficiency, or D, phlebitis. 
The answer is C, valvular insufficiency. Number 21, what degree of disease is there on the right extremity of this patient? A, normal, B, borderline, C, occlusion, or D, moderately abnormal? The answer is D, moderately abnormal. You see that the ABI in the ankle after exercise is 0.45, and moderate peripheral arterial disease is described as ABIs between 0.40 through 0.69. Number 22, what degree of disease, if any, is present on the left side? A, normal, B, equivocal, C, mild, or D, moderately abnormal? You can see that after exercise, the left ankle ABI is 0.76, so the answer is C, mild. An ABI of 0.70 to 0.90 is considered mild obstruction. Number 23, while scanning a portal Doppler, you, no you notice hepatofugal flow. This is indicative of A, normal direction, B, portal hypertension, C, stenosis, or D, thrombosis. The answer is B, portal hypertension. Number 24, the smallest vessels in the body are A, arterioles, B, venules, C, capillaries, or D, sinusoids. The answer is C, capillaries. Number 25, the auscultation of a carotid brewery may be caused by A, carotid body tumor, B, carotid occlusion, C, carotid stenosis, or D, intimal thickening. The answer is C, carotid stenosis. All right, well, this concludes the first 25 questions, so stay tuned for the next set of questions.